All right, so here's the V-Twin engine model kit designed by SZG and CBY. So just this tiny little box is what it comes with and it's supported by Bamboo Labs. We open this box up, we've got one little motor and a bag of screws, springs, and magnets and just a generic construction kit that doesn't help too much. But basically what you're gonna do is your Bamboo Handy app, you're gonna scan this QR code here and then that will bring up um, all the 3D models that you need to print out. And if you have a Bamboo Labs 3D printer, it'll have like the pre-sliced plates. So you just open those on your phone, select them, print them out. And it's pretty simple and slick to do. Except there's like eight plates of uh, parts you need to print this whole thing. So anyways, we're going to get started in building this engine kit. Let's go. All right, and we'll start off here by assembling the cylinder heads. So we'll have two valves. One will be intake and exhaust. We'll find out which is which later. So let's just start with one. Looks like we are supposed to put valve springs on, then this retainer. Then we will lock those together with a screw. No cats required. And there we go, we have valve action. And next up, we're going to assemble this plate onto the head. And I think this alignment tab should be up later so the valve cover can fit onto that. And we'll attach that with just the four provided screws here. So now we're going to take the cylinder head and snap it into place. And then these uh, cooling fins should slide onto here. They also snap in place. Oh, very good, very nice. Now for the second one, let's get this put on here again. So in a real V-twin engine, not all of these pieces would be separate. I think a lot of these were separated for ease of assembly for 3D printing. And later also, like these cooling fins, you can take off the side to see the piston moving up and down. I think. Uh, some pieces were separated for that, which is a clever idea. And now to snap this cylinder wall in place. There we go. And let's snap the cooling fins on. Yeah, that's quite satisfying. Okay, so I studied this a little bit. We have a left and we have a right, and these are where the push rods go through. So they'll be facing this way and the cylinder heads will be mounted like this. And we see here there's a flat edge here and here I assembled the flat edge here. Um, I did this one backwards. This flat edge should be on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap this one around. So that looks a little bit better. We've got the flat edges on the outsides. So this larger fin will go on the left cylinder, the left side. This will be for our, our exhaust port. Slides into these grooves like this. And then this will slide on the other side. The shorter one will be here for our intake. And then let's do the same with the right side. So again, the larger side will be on the right side of the right. And the smaller side sliding into the grooves here um, as well to complete those cooling fins. And we'll, we will have a little plug here that will screw into place. This is the right, it's right handed threads, for the left, it's left handed threads, so you can't uh, mix them up. And now we'll assemble the left and right cylinder heads together. We will put this carburetor piece in between and that will just snap into the intake side of both cylinder heads. So now we are done with this assembly for now. We're gonna set it aside. Next, we're gonna get on to the piston assembly. So here are all the pistons, connecting rods, and crankshaft here. So we'll put the connecting rod in here and then we'll have the wrist pins slide in there and I think these lock into place. Just some friction fit. 
that again. Now these are not labeled with any sort of right or left that I can tell. Now we're going to assemble these so the connecting rods are pointed in the opposite direction. Not like this, but like this. I'll put the middle part of our crankshaft in here. Get our two bearings on. And then assemble the two ends of the crankshaft. And then we'll use some screws to lock this into place. And there we go. There is our piston and crankshaft assembly. All right, on to the fun part. We're going to assemble the pistons and the cylinder heads together. I'll take the front of the crankcase and snap that into place, hopefully. There we go, now it is fit into one assembly. And that'll be held together with the six screws here. All right, now we're gonna snap the butterfly into place. There we go, this is the throttle plate that will let the engine rev in real life. Next up, we're gonna start assembly on this gearbox. Now we'll put these uh, push rod guides in. These have some arrows on them, so they should be assembled like this. Arrow going towards the engine. And there's eight screws to hold these guides into place. All right, now we're gonna take and bring these two pieces together. And those will be held together with four screws. All right, next up we're gonna take the camshaft here. We're going to assemble that on here. And there's a small plastic retainer and a screw to hold that in place. Don't want that too tight. Now this cannot spin. So I'm going to back that off just a little bit. There we go. So now we're going to place this other gear to connect here. We have a screw and a plastic retaining cap. So now we're going to assemble the rocker arms onto the push rods. Once these are assembled, they should rock back and forth like so. Also, there's a flat edge on these rods. Make sure that's facing towards the engine like this. Note from future me here. So it turns out I assembled these push rods and rocker arms incorrectly. So this way is wrong and this way is correct. So once you assemble it the correct way, the correct way, the valves actually open and close much better. So if you see it assembled the other way in the rest of the video, just ignore that. All right, now we're going to assemble the push rod and rocker arms on here. Just like so. And then we will have this uh, little arm that's gonna go through here to align things. And we'll just have a little retainer screw to hold it in place. So if I did this right, when we move this camshaft, we should get valve movement. Not a lot, but there's a little bit there. And again, for the other side, we'll drop these rods into place, and then we will slide in this holding pin to hold them in place. And then a screw to make sure things don't fall apart. So now let's flip around to the other side of the engine. We're going to put this crankcase cover on. Then we'll have another five screws to hold that cover into place. Since we're back here, we're going to go ahead and put the spark plugs in. Okay, now we're gonna set the timing. So we're gonna take this cylinder off here and we're gonna set the crankshaft. So this piston is all the way at the top. 
And then we're going to turn the camshaft to where this valve is all the way opening. Right there. Now we're going to put this gear in place to lock those two together so that the timing is in sync. Then we're going to put this gear on top to retain that and we'll put one screw in there to lock everything together. And for the last step here, we're going to assemble the electric motor. So we're going to put this guy in first. Then we will feed the wire for this through. And now use these long screws to lock that into place. Now I'll put this knob in place to connect it to the electric motor. And finally, let's screw this gear onto the electric motor. And on the back here, we can assemble this cover to hide the wire. And there we go. Now the wire is hidden there and everything looks nice. So for the last step, we have this stack of magnets. We're going to go ahead and put those in place. This will help hold the valve covers onto the motor as well as the front cover here. So for this part, I ended up having to put a dab of hot glue onto these magnets and then put them into place so they would stay without coming out. For this part, you're going to be very careful and pay attention to the direction that you put the magnets into the cover and onto the motor. Otherwise, your covers won't attach properly. And with the magnets in place, we can put the valve covers on and the front cover. That is pretty slick. And one of the final steps is to put this stand onto the bottom so it can stand on its own. And that just snaps like this. Now let's rotate to the back and we have this little crank handle that came with it. So I think they have a little bit of an oversight here. There's a hole in the shaft to screw this onto, but this doesn't have a hole for a screw to go through. So a little bit of an oversight there, so this thing can just fall off. But this is the manual crank to then turn the engine over. All right, let me show you what I'm dealing with here. Um, I was opening up this cover because these two gears were slipping, and I was trying to see why is this gear slipping. And then I found that uh, the shaft had broken off. So it broke off down here and it was just this tall skinny part. So of course it's not very strong and it's not just a small part we can reprint. The part that broke is this entire housing. So I'm going to see if I can't put a brass insert in here and just screw directly in there to avoid having to reprint this entire part. Let's see how it goes. There we go. So I've got my brass insert there. I printed off a sleeve that will go inside of this bearing. So let's get it all assembled and see if it works. Looks like it works. All right, so now that it's all put together, let's take a look at how it works. So we have this crank on the back side that I will be rotating. We can see all the gears moving here. We can see all the gears moving as well as the rocker arms and push rods moving. And then for the electric motor, we can go ahead and plug this on, which energizes the motor. And then to engage it, we push it down and engage with the gears. So one thing I saw online was making this front cover printed out of an acrylic or some clear material. So I did have a clear material and I tried that, but in my opinion, I think the effect is not so great. It's just barely uh, transparent. So I took another approach. I printed just half of the part. So I got the outline here and then I put clear tape over the front so we can get a very transparent effect while still having the front cover. But in all honesty, I think it works just fine to just remove the normal cover and you can see the gears if you want to. 
So what's also cool about this project is it does give you a couple windows. So in this window here, you can see the, the camshaft gears pushing on the push rods there. And then in this window, you can see the crankshaft and the connecting rods moving down here. And then you can disassemble the side of the cylinder here. There we go. And with the side of the cylinder disassembled, you can see the piston moving up and down. And I believe you can see the valves opening, except they're probably opening when the piston is up. So overall, I think this is a really cool uh, project and really educational to learn more about how motors work. So I hope this video helps other people in learning about how to build this project and also furthering the knowledge about internal combustion engines. That might be a lost art in the future, so let's keep it alive and keep it going. Till then, we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.